Hi everybody, welcome to this week's edition of CCMA Creates Kids, where we'll be working on a project based on the principles of color theory. Specifically, we'll be making a poster that relates to the work of the artist duo Luftwerk. Luftwerk create projection-based installations that rely on a complex use of color. Before we start today's project, I want to do an experiment. Stare directly at the black dot in the center of this red rectangle. In a moment, the screen will change, but I want you to keep staring at that dot. Did you see that? Let's try it one more time. Stare directly at the black dot. And in a moment, the screen will change. Keep staring at the dot. What did you see? You most likely saw that when we took away the red square, there was almost a ghost image of a bluish green square in its place. So what's going on there? A lot of this has to do with how our eyes work. When we see a color, that information is sent to our eyes, and then it is taken in by a set of special cells called photoreceptors that line the back of our eyes. There are two main types of photoreceptors that help us see. They're called cones and rods. Rods help us determine the relative lightness or darkness of the world around us, or value, whereas cones take in color information, primarily through red, green, and blue receptors. When we look at an object that's red, our red receptors are doing most of the work. Now, if we stare at a red object for a long time, those receptors start to get tired. And when they get tired, the other cones in the eyes kind of pick up some of the work and start to feed some information to your brain as well. So even though you're looking at a red object, both the green and blue receptors are also giving information to your brain. And that becomes very evident when you remove the red object. And for a moment, you see the after effect, the glow of the work of those other receptors. So when it comes to making art, you can use this fact to your advantage through a principle called simultaneous contrast. And what that is, is basically understanding that colors you see are influenced by those around them. You can manipulate them. So let's look at these two squares. Looks like that we have four colors, green, dark brown, a light red, and a dark red. But what we're actually seeing is three colors. So if I take these two colors that look very different in the center and I just slide them down, put them side by side, you'll see that they're actually the same color. Here's another example. So we have a dark blue and a light blue and a dark blue square and a pink square. Now, if I pull those down, once again, we see that those are actually the same color. So what's happening here is on the pink square, it's close to the red, so it's affecting those red photoreceptors in our eyes and it's making that center square seem more red, uh, seem more, excuse me, green blue and in a way uh, more intense and more saturated. In all of these examples, we're using our understanding of how the eye perceives color. And we're taking the larger squares, the dominant color, to affect the color in the smaller squares, altering how we perceive them. Now we're gonna apply this to our project for today. So for today's project, we're gonna need some colored construction paper, a surface to glue onto. Here I have a large sheet of paper. You need a pencil, ruler, glue, and some scissors. And the first thing we're gonna do is figure out how to divide up your work surface that you're gluing onto into six equal squares. Once you have that measurement, you're gonna cut six different colored squares and glue them on to the paper. We'll do that right now. Okay, 
Now that I have my, my six squares, I'm going to place them in a way around my surface that looks good, but also I'm going to try to place squares next to each other that are very different. Uh, so squares that are a lot different in terms of value or color temperature. But the idea is to get um, squares that really kind of stand out next to each other. Just kind of loosely play them. I also want to point out that um, I'm doing this on an 18 by 24 sheet of paper, but you can do it on an eight and a half by 11, whatever size. Just make sure that your, your squares evenly divide up the space. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. I got the, the blue and the orange next to each other, the green and orange, and I like that black square on top. So now I'm gonna take some time with my glue stick and just glue down these squares, making sure the edges line up with each other as best as possible. I'll go ahead and do that right now. Now I'm going to work on the shapes for the center of the squares. I'm going to do a bunch of circles and I'm going to do them in the same color to see how much the purple changes from square to square. So I'm just going to use this cap to make a bunch of circles um, and then cut them out. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Right now I have all my purple circles. Um, and since I'm using just one color, I don't have to worry about placement. I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing them right in the direct center of each of my squares while well, slight rectangles. So just glue that down. So you see this first one on the yellow square is really gonna stand out because yellow is a complement of purple, has a lot of contrast on this next one. It's important to get your glue evenly around the surface. And when I put it down, I like to lightly place it, then actually use just my finger or sometimes press down the edges. Sometimes I use the back of my hand too, just to press down the shapes. Already you can see that a big difference between the purple, how it looks on the yellow versus on the black. Put it on the red square. Now again, you see how the purple's even different yet on the red than it was on the black and the yellow. Get that glue on there nice and even. You can see on the blue square, since the blue is so dark, it makes that purple light almost as light as it appears on that black square. But if you look at the black and the blue squares, you notice the one purple dot on the blue square is a little more red. And on the orange here, press that down. And then the last one is going to be on the green square. All right. And there we go. Your own color code poster. So even though I use the same purple, you can see how different that purple looks depending on what color square it's on. 
Now, when you make your poster, you don't have to stick with one color. You could try to emphasize colors in different ways. So you could take, say, really high contrasting colors. Or you could work with some colors that try to blend in more. Or you could do a mix of two, some that blend in with the background and some that stand out. You could even play with different shapes if you want to. Um, it doesn't have to be circles. But in the end, you end up with a really nice poster uh, that demonstrates some of the basic principles of color theory. Now, as always, I hope you enjoyed our lesson and please send me your finished projects. You can send those to info at theccma.org or you can tag us on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks and I'll see you next week.